Have you ever gone bowling? Those little balls are just about the densest thing you can think of. They're super solid, right? Think again. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about wormhole. And to start off, we're going to say something that might be a little contradictive to what you've learned in the past. Nothing in the world is truly solid. Before the Big Bang, the entire universe was compressed into a spiraling ball of energy. A very small ball. Everything that ever was or once was came from this little tiny ball of energy. Now that it's exploded and the dark matter and the positive matter have canceled each other's out, so there's actually less matter or energy than there used to be, and our universe is millions of light years across, all the particles and energy we once had are spread out across everything that is, across those millions of light years. And so consequently, even this table has gaps between all of its atoms. If you took a microscope and got close enough, you'd see an atom here, an atom here, but all this space in between would have absolutely nothing. Because we're too big to go through those gaps, we don't see the difference, but there is no such thing as a truly solid object. So even in solid objects, there are gaps in the third dimension. But there are also gaps in the fourth dimension, in time and space. Little things called wormholes. There might be a mouth here and a mouth here and a tunnel connecting the two, which connect two parts of time space together. And they are everywhere, and I mean everywhere. But they're microscopic and they suck in their own radiation and energy that they give off, creating a feedback loop and destroy themselves. And then reform and destroy themselves over and over many, many times per second. So one, if you believe the fourth dimension exists, the theory that a wormhole could allow you to travel through time and space technically works. The problem is enlarging and stabilizing a wormhole long enough for us to get through would be extremely challenging. Imagine having the mouth here and here from now to the Jurassic Age, and all of a sudden the tunnel collapsed on itself when you're about here through the tunnel. What would happen to you? Wormholes are something we know very little about. Kind of theoretical, there's been a lot of evidence showing that they could exist, but also some evidence showing that they couldn't. For instance, how would we quantify time except as the passing of photons, as the passing of light by our planet? That's the biggest issue with all four dimensional theories, and you can go back to my episode on the fourth dimension if you want to read more about that or listen to more. But today, for today's episode, we were operating completely under the pretense that the fourth dimension slash time itself does actually exist. One of my favorite thought experiments of all time was designed by Stephen Hawking to explain why a wormhole would have to destroy itself with its, with its own radiation. It's sort of like a feedback loop that you would have by placing a microphone by an amplifier. All of a sudden you hear a loud screeching noise. You go in and out and back back in again, over and over and over. But not only would wormholes under that context have to destroy themselves with radiation, they also allow for paradoxes, which are two things that cannot possibly exist together, like number one is correct and number one is wrong. These are two statements that contradict each other and you say that they're both true. Well, there's this thought experiment called the shooter. And basically, a shooter on one side of the wormhole about 60 seconds between his former self loads up a gun, goes around to the other side of the wormhole and shoots himself while he's loading the gun. The concept is he could have never loaded the gun in order to shoot himself in the first place if he killed himself. And so the only way that this could possibly exist is if there are multiple dimensions or if wormholes were impossible because they destroyed themselves with radiation and their own feedback. So it's a really complicated idea and we really don't know that much about it. Don't tell Stephen Hawking I said that, but I said it. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. Make sure to check us out on Kickstarter and make sure to like and share this video because the greatest compliment you can give us other than getting a pair of our awesome Tesseract dice from us is by liking and sharing this video with a friend or family member. And make sure to check us out tomorrow when we get to another Sun episode, which yes, does probably mean another Doomsday episode, The Supernova.